You see some things get more advanced every year. Bones were like that for a long time, although now it seems they've all converged on being identical black rectangles, and all the increases in their processing speed each year seem to get offset by all the random bloatware they want to cram onto the operating systems. Like, no, I don't want you to pre-install Candy Crush, I don't want you to commit all my childhood memories to your barely functioning cloud storage services, and I don't want to permanently synchronise my device to the toaster I keep in my bathtub. I'd like my black rectangle to connect to the internet and then never ask me anything again ever, if possible. Anyway, I'm already going on tangents. Uh, what else has been developing quickly? AI has been going a bit exponential in the last few years, although despite the great potential of the technology, it seems to be used primarily to increase humanity's cringe levels higher than previously thought possible, so I might just leave it there for now and move on. One thing you don't see giant improvements in every day is aerospace engineering. That's why it's so hyped to see actual progress happening in the private space flight sector right now. Aerospace nerds have been left blindly groping for upcoming government projects in anticipation of something cool for the last half a century, only to finally take the blind fold off and realise they've just spent the last 50 years fondling the government's knee pits. Anyway, all that development money is going somewhere, and if that somewhere isn't going into space, then where is it? Do we even need to ask? Even I, a guy so optimistic about the future that I'm borderline utopian, understand that no government is spending money for the benefit of mankind when they can instead use it to have a monopoly on violence. You might have seen recently the Chinese government has allowed for some new planes they've been working on to be seen in the skies and photographed for the first time. There's been a fair amount of pant pissing about this, not half because it sounds like these are being touted as sixth generation fighters. Now sixth generation sounds kind of futuristic and impressive until you remember that the Nintendo GameCube was a sixth generation games console. Sixth generation can mean anything if you don't have any perspective. I could refer to a campfire as a sixth generation heating system if we consider the first gen to be back when people just breathily coughed on each other for warmth. So this discussion kind of has to start with a quick rundown of different fighter generations. The whole concept of fighter jet generations didn't even exist until the F-22 Raptor came along and some marketing genius at Lockheed Martin decided that calling their play the first fifth generation fighter would be a brilliant way to jerk themselves off. I guess fifth generation fighter sounds better than sneaky plane, that'll be $350 million each please. Once the term was coined, then every other jet got retroactively slapped with a generation number, like Dragon Ball Z fans retroactively trying to figure out what all Dragon Ball characters' power levels were. Anyway, here's a general rundown of what the fighter jet generations tend to refer to nowadays. All call signs, check in. This is Poo Poo 2, standing by. First generation covered the 40s and the 50s, where jets arguably weren't much better than the propeller planes. They had straight wings, mounted guns, and flew subsonically. Germany was up to a few things at the time, some of which were not very poggers, but one of their cooler activities was working on jet technology, resulting in the Messerschmitt. Me Me Jesus Christ. Messerschmitt 262, which would have been quite good if it was actually quite good. Might have been better if it could have flown for more than a handful of hours without melting. There was also the American F-86 Sabre, which looks like a novelty airplane toy meant to hoover up Rice Krispies from a carpet. And let's not forget the British Gloucester Meteor and the Soviet Yak-15, because nope, I've already forgotten why. Okay, bored now, moving on. Jump forward to the 50s and 60s era and we got the second generation. We'd gotten a little bit better at this whole jet technology thing, but we were still fundamentally in the figuring things the f out stage. We started using swept wings and more powerful engines so we could go supersonic, but they still struggled with the basic laws of physics here and there because they still had a tendency to crash a lot. Sorry to interrupt, this is just a quick message to say, statistically speaking, you're probably not subscribed, so I'll make you a deal. Press the subscribe button and I won't come over to your house and do this. <coughs> Alright, thanks. Back to the video. The F-104 Starfighter was nicknamed the Widowmaker because it murdered so many fucking pilots. Second Gen also introduced primitive radar and guided missiles, although they made the slight mistake of thinking that missiles would make short-range cannons and dogfighting obsolete, which made for a few awkward staring matches in the Korean War when the aircraft would, in retrospect, quite predictably, end up getting in too close to use the missiles and end up having to wage war with the power of suggestive hand gestures and drawing cocks and tits in the window condensation. Fuck short extra, this is shit noise. With the 60s and 70s came the third generation, which brought multi-role fighters. These smoothed off some of the earlier generation's rougher edges and made planes that could do air-to-air -air and air-to-ground missions. So at the time, these planes probably felt like technology had peaked, considering the planes could just kind of do everything. This era brought some pretty iconic stuff, including the F-4 Phantom II, which was an absolute fucking brick of an aircraft, about as subtle as the noises made by a gorilla being launched from a trebuchet. There was also the MiG-21, which became ubiquitous, like a sort of airborne AK-47. The British had the Harrier jump jet, which was kind of cool, because you could do that whole, my people need me thing when you slowly ascend into the air. We, we made the meme. 
Never mind. Integler 2-1, boarding in, awaiting link up. The fourth generation showed up around the 70s when it became all about agility and dogfights. Turns out, air supremacy kind of trumps having a bunch of dudes on the ground. It turns out the planes can blow up the dudes, but the dudes can't really blow up the planes. I don't know how it took us till the 70s to figure this out. So jet fighters got really good at air-to-air -air because they knew if they had the air, they basically had everything. They were increasingly equipped with advanced avionics, and they were all fly-by-wire rather than having mechanical or hydraulic-assisted control systems. There were loads of fourth gen fighters. This was a, a super popular generation. Most of the favourites are here, right? The F-16 Fighting Falcon, the F-15 Eagle, and of course the F-14 Tomcat, the most anime-looking plane ever conceived. Also the F-A-18, a plane so good at everything it needed both the letters in its name. The Soviet Union had some cool ones. They had the uh, the Su-27 Flanker, the MiG-29 Fulcrum. To be honest, I have a problem telling all the Russian ones apart from each other. I usually just make an excuse to leave before they get mad at me. Who are they, you ask? Who are you, the f***ing fake scenario, please? Get the f*** out of here. Anyway, I do like the Russian ones. You can just tell they're built to be robust as f***. They were from the USSR, which stands for... You seeing this shit? It's f***ing rad. Anyway, onwards to Generation... 4.5. Beep Supreme 30, coming in low and fast. So yeah, there's a Generation 4.5, which is slightly confusing. Hey, I'm just a f***ing messenger, don't get mad at me. So the story is, all the 5th gen technology was looking real nice, but to design and construct a brand new 5th generation fighter was going to be so expensive, we'd have to do it in America and start going around unplugging all the old people. So instead of that, most places decided to compromise. They'd use more or less basic 4th generation airframes, but they'd have some tweaks here and there, and they'd have some high-tech avionics as well, and they'd have some better radar systems, Maybe they'd be a little bit stealthier, maybe they'd throw in some heated seats, maybe they'd have a coffee maker. Generation 4.5 included the FA-18 Super Hornet, which is like a regular Hornet, except they fill it with actual Hornets to motivate the pilots to work faster. There's also the likes of the Eurofighter and the Rafale, which were designed from the ground up to be part of this kind of sort of generational jump that also kind of sort of isn't a generational jump. <laughs> 97. Weapons hot. Okay, at last we're getting to the fifth generation. This one's the real shit. The fifth gen have the full stealth design and all the radar absorbent coatings to minimize any radar reflections to make sure they go completely unnoticed on enemy radar until they're so close it's already too late to respond. The F-22 was the first fifth generation aircraft, but compared to any other generations, there's barely been any fifth generation aircraft, because again, they're so expensive. Now, 20 years on, the F-22 is still largely considered the world's best air dominance fighter. The US still doesn't sell these to anyone. One, not even to their allies because of how sensitive the tech is on these things. The last thing they want is Xi Jinping getting his honey-covered fingers all over it. Now there is also the F-35 which is a more recent, more multi-role aircraft with a bunch of different variants able to do different sort of things like Harrier-style VTOL takeoffs and shit like that. They do sell these to allies and since nobody wants to develop their own shit, basically everyone has F-35s now. Since the whole idea of the F-35 was to make one airframe design with a bunch of different variants capable of doing not just slightly different but vastly different from each other. This plane is ridiculously complicated in a variety of ways. Then there's the Russian Su-57. This one's famous for its two omnidirectionally vectoring jet engines. Not sure how useful that actually is in battle, but it does mean it can do some pretty fun acrobatics. I've also heard there's some concerns with the build quality, such as visibly different types of bolts and shit being used, which is definitely going to hurt the stealth capability if it's true. They're also largely putting out of using them in Ukraine other than to fire long-range missiles from over the border to keep them safe because they're too worried of losing them. I actually really like that strategy. In fact, I think it's kind of perfect. You know what, why don't they go ahead and put the rest of their fucking military on the Russian side of the border as well? Lastly, there's the Chinese J-20. Looks pretty cool. It's basically an F-22 from AliExpress. This is Monkey 4. Ready to hooga some boogas. Okay, and at long last, we're at the 6th generation fighters. So there are no currently in-service 6th generation fighters. In fact, nobody's even quite sure what will define the 6th generation. Even better stealth seems to be a big one, as well as potentially the ability to command a squadron of unmanned drones alongside your fighter. In fact, the idea may just be to have the fighter itself only be optionally manned with the capability to fly it remotely, or even just have an AI do it. We'll be getting into some pretty wild territory when we're getting an AI to do our murdering for us, Jesus fucking Christ. Also, direct energy weapons. That might be a staple. So basically they have what looks like a camera on the plane, and it swivels to point at something, and then the something in question bursts into flames. Welcome to the future. So the recent shit we've seen coming out of China is meant to be a look at their new 6th generation test articles, or testicles as I like to call them. Now the US does have its next generation air Dominance Program, or NGAD. The UK, Italy and Japan has the Global Combat Air Program, and there's others, but like none of these are at the stage where anything's actually flying, or at least not where the public can see it. So the fact that China has potentially leapfrogged everyone else is the reason why every Western general woke up on December the 27th knee-deep in anxious diarrhea about this. I'm almost going to be proud of China if these do turn out to be legitimately 6th generation.
generation aircraft, because normally I just wait for the US to build something and then watch as China makes a carbon copy of it for 1 50th of the price. I don't know why that always happens with everything. I'm not imagining it, right? Like from cars to robots to fucking butt blogs, I swear. Copying stuff is just their thing. They're masters of it. I don't know whether to find it annoying or kind of incredible. It'd be easier to just design something from scratch, no? There's a shitload of analysis you can go watch on YouTube about the supposed sixth generation fighters we've seen out of China, but spoiler warning, all those videos are basically just a lot of serious looking military analysts using as many words as possible to tell you they have no fucking idea. There's definitely two aircraft that China have shown off that potentially look sixth gen. One's a small lambda wing design that we couldn't even see the top of, so it could literally be unmanned for all that we know. And there's another one that's fucking huge and it's an incredibly good shape for basically perfect stealth capability. And it has three engines and a shitload of control surfaces. Looks like it could be a bomber. General consensus on this one is it wouldn't be all that manoeuvrable, so it wouldn't be great as a dogfighter. Although that said, it would probably take you out from several hundred miles away. So if it somehow ends up in a dogfight, that means the pilot has probably died at the wheel. The three engine configuration this one has is pretty interesting. Probably means this thing's going to be fast as f in a straight line, so I can't wait to see what the top speed is. Anyway, that's my rundown of the fighter generations. I hope you all enjoyed. If you're an aviation nerd, let me know if I f***ed any of this up. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe if you want, and I'll catch you next time. Over and out.